Welcome back. So now, in this particular module, we are going to discuss a topic called as soil types. But before that, within the same module, let's understand the definition of the term soil itself. It says, and I quote, the mixture of rock particles as well as humus is called as soil. Now, one must understand how is exactly soil formed. Soil is formed due to the weathering of rocks. Soil is formed due to the disintegration of rocks. So you are going to have rocks. Those rocks are going to get disintegrated, which means they are going to break down into smaller particles. And that is going to happen due to climatic changes, air and water. That is going to be the first part of soil. That is rock particles. Apart from that, same soil is also going to contain humus. Humus is considered to be the dead and decaying organic matter which is also supposed to be present in soil. So that gives you the definition of soil. Soil is going to be a mixture of what? Of rock particles and humus. The rock particles are going to come due to the disintegration of rocks or due to the weathering of rocks and humus is going to be the dead and decaying organic matter which is also present in soil. Apart from that, one must understand that the soil, whichever it is, is classified on the basis of the proportion of particles of various sizes, which basically means that all kinds of soil is made up of particles. Depending upon the size of these particles, we are going to classify soil into a total of three types. The first soil is called as sandy soil. The second one is called as clay soil. And the third and the last one is called as loamy soil. Within the same module, let's discuss all of these soil types in detail. Let's have a look. First soil that we are going to discuss in detail is called as sandy soil. One must understand that over here, the soil is going to contain a greater proportion of big particles. If that happens, it is called as sandy soil. So if the particles associated with soil are relatively larger, then in that particular case, the soil is called as sandy soil. Over here, sand particles are going to be very, very large and they are going to have lots of spaces between them and all of these spaces are supposed to be filled with air. Because of that property, the water is not going to stay within the soil. It is going to drain quickly through the spaces and it is equally going to go through the spaces very, very fast. Wonderful, isn't it? Because of that, sandy soil is going to be relatively light. At the same time, it is going to be well aerated, but at the same time, it is also going to be very, very dry. So within this concept, I've learned that if the particles present in the soil are relatively large, it is called as sandy soil. Why so? Because the sand particles are going to be very large and there are going to be a large number of spaces between them. Because of those large number of spaces, the soil associated over here will not be able to hold that much quantity of water and using those large spaces, the water will easily pass through. Because of this, the entire soil sample is going to be very, very light, but at the same time, it will be very well aerated, which means a large amount of air is present within the soil, but at the same time, the soil is also going to be dry. The next kind of soil that we are going to discuss in detail is called as clay soil. About clay soil, what should I know? If the proportion of fine particles is relatively higher, then it is called as clay soil. So in sandy soil, the particles which were larger were present in the highest amount. And here, the particles which are the smallest are going to be present in the largest amount. So if the proportion of fine particles, if the proportion of smaller particles is large, then in that particular case, it is called as clay soil. Clay particles are much, much smaller. And because of the fact that they're much, much smaller, they are packed tightly together. 
which means there is hardly going to be any available space for air. Because of that, the soil is going to have less air and because the same, the same soil is going to hold more and more of water. Wonderful, isn't it? The final kind of soil that we are going to discuss in this particular module is going to be loamy soil. If the amount of particles is between sand and clay, the soil is considered to be loam. So in this particular case, one must understand that as far as sandy soil is considered, the particles which are the largest are going to be present in maximum amount. For clay soil, the particles which are the smallest are going to be present in the largest amount. But if the amount of particles is going to be between sand and clay, the soil is considered to be loam. One must also understand that loamy soil is also going to have humus within it and it has entirely the right water holding capacity for plant growth. Which means out of the three soils available, that is sandy, clay and loamy, loamy is going to be the best for plant growth because it is going to have the right water holding capacity, it is going to have a good amount of humus in it, therefore the soil is going to be relatively fertile and those are the accurate conditions that we require for plant growth. Thank you. And yes, please do not forget to like, share, subscribe and press the bell icon.